China, and you know, how did you decide to start acting in film, and did you receive any formal training before acting in China? Actually, I always believe that, uh, you know, everybody has a mission in life, and I'm, I'm very daring, very brave, and very honest to follow how I feel. I never learned acting, and when I was a child, I don't know, now I'm talking, I was mute. I couldn't talk, I was so scared. I, I just learned recently, I realized that I had a memory of a previous life, you're not doing it. So today I dress like this, if you see some of my film, it's a wild animal. So I realized my previous life, I was this wild animal, like a cheetah, like a herd, like this wild cat, running free in nature. Therefore, come to, as a human being, I don't know how to behave. I was like frozen, I was scared of human beings, really, I feel like I don't know those people, I don't know. So I have this free sphere, but I don't know people. So my parents are, are professors. My mother teaches uh, literature. My father teaches music. They have a holiday come to my house, right? They say, come here, call auntie and uncles. I was frozen. And they say, hey, hey, call them. I just didn't do anything. You go, I ran. I feel like I, I don't know why I'm so afraid of human being at that time. But I feel like an internal, I have this big So finally, I learned about acting. It's like a psychological twist in my mind. I said, wow, I'm playing another character. So I can be me. Nobody will know. Because, right, it's another character. Therefore, I can be brutally truthful, honest. That's what I do. I never learned acting. But I'm so much fun doing this. I can do all of it because people don't know it's me, so I feel safe. So that's why I'm good. And, and, I, I'm one of the best performers in the world, like I can see. I work with so many big stars. A lot of them are afraid of me. Because when, I, when I'm there, standing there, I have this person, I'm just so confident. It's not only that, I'm not a child, I want to have fun play. You know, the best sense when we're doing it's like you don't know what's going to happen. You're just there, excited. Like in Hollywood, right? Big trailer, and everybody say, Oh, but you're ready? I say, yeah, I'm ready. They think you probably know, I have no clue what I'm going to do, but I know this excitement. I don't know what I know, but I know something magical, I know. So they say, show us. I say, turn the camera on. You know, I don't like to rehearse all With the camera on, I would just like play. Like I change it, I play. I don't even know. So after that, they say, you're brilliant. They say, how did you do it? I say, am I good? Because I did not know what I was doing because I was not aware. When you're not aware, that means you're in the moment as how it happened. You know the camera I learned there, I love camera. Camera is so sharp, like a ghost. If you lie, the light is bigger. If you be truthful, they make it so powerful. And somewhere I feel like uh, you have to be honest. And also you have to like a child. Like I'm taking a little bit further, I'm just talking. So, um, like in fear, like I'm, I came from a communist country. Like you say, I'm the cover of Playboy magazine. It's too far away. Hugh, when Hugh Hoffner called me, he said, Playboy magazine. I said, no, no, no. I said, that's born of my mind. I'm a communist country. He said, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. I rejected for three months. He said, that's a little sexy thing. He just think I'm sexy. He said, no matter what, get her. His editing come here to have meeting with me. What do you want? I said, no, no, I'm not going to do it. Finally, in the end, I designed, I designed a big pink rose on the back with my nude body. I designed the, the projection, a man woman making love on my body. I designed out the Chinese calligrapher on my body. I designed it. Finally, I still don't want to do it. He said, you have to get by me. Then I said, OK, if I ask a price, I ask a lot of money, then it's too much of this, forget about it. I asked my lady, whatever she wants, I said, shit, I should ask more. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, no. So finally, you know, it's funny, like, uh, I, normally I'm like makeup stuff, I'm very fast. That makeup's already two and a half hours, I'm still in the makeup room. Everybody said, I mean, it's two and a half, you're still there? It's just like, a, I don't know how to be new, therefore I'm just taking time, right? Finally, I have to be there. I said, uh, you know, when, when it's hot in the room, and it's, your nipple looks so much more <laughs> provocative. I said, ah, oh, this guy is sweaty. It's been you. I'm naked, right? Finally get him. OK, take me forever. Take off clothes. I was like this. <laughs> I say, move your hand. 
<laughs> Taking me a long, long time to finally be free. So Hugh Hamner take seven days of shooting. I said, are you shooting a movie? He keep changing the color. In the end, I, I feel like, um, you know, when you walk into the Playboy Mansion, all the Cindy Crawford, Mario Mom, all this nude picture in front of you, like, wow. After a while, you feel like, if you're wearing clothes, you're kind of dirty. That's a fairy tale then. In the end, I'm running around naked, you know, you kind of, uh, he liberated me in a way. So I feel like, uh, wow, I said, uh, I'm gonna be in trouble at that time, like in, in China, right? People actually in China say, oh, oh, buy Playboy. First time I bought a Playboy, I bought one. I think it's six or eighty dollar, very expensive. I look at it, oh my God, what is this? So finally, my, my family, right? I, I couldn't know that everybody talked about me. My sister called, he said, you better call, call my mom and dad. I said, oh God, I'm in trouble. So I called my mom, and mom said, like, uh, uh, why you didn't call? I said, I've been busy. Uh, I said, Mom, you see, I, I can't talk, I'm with people. She's pretty much, I'm with people, right? Finally, I said, she call, call Dad. I called my father, I said, uh, my father, like, I heard some, some magazine or something, right? I said, no, no, it's nothing. He said, uh, next time you come back, can you bring one back home? <laughs> <laughs> so I went home. I actually didn't bring, because I just don't know how to present it to him, you know? Okay. It's like a liberation changed me. Now I be, I'm, I'm in mean, a legacy. Hugh Hoffman, he's such a cultured man. He invited me to play with him. He said, well, in your family, you can come all the time. So I drive there in the weekend. He always played classical movies. He's a really cultured guy. Probably you didn't know all this girl, this whatever, Bonnie's there. He doesn't, I'm not, he doesn't really give a shit. It's for him, it's almost like a decoration. You know, he's so, he's so beyond that, but he have that just, Everybody to see you can do that. So that's the experience that I learned that basically to how to break, you know, when, when you cross the threshold. Like, like uh, first time, I'm taking him along. So after Playboy, I accepted, right? And I remember when the Playboy uh, released, the next day I was flying to San Francisco for a film festival. All the fans in the LAX, they asked me, I said, like, oh my God, how did this is new pictures? I was fierce. I called my agent, he said, my name. There's the internet. I was like, oh my God. I thought it's only the magazine. Even now that people in the Hollywood red cover this side, I was like hiding. But it's something like kind of a mischievous kind of a opened me in a way. You know, you should be proud of who you are as a woman, you know. Anyway, that's the story I'm taking with. Oh, well, thank you. Um, expanding on your film career a little bit more, you've chosen to do a lot of your own stunt work. Um, why, why did you decide to do that? And did you receive formal training for the stunt work or? Because I, I feel like the body language actually, even like Bruce Lee, right? What made him great is the energy behind how he fight. fight. Anybody can put punch, but the speed, the power, and how he doing it is to gather all the universe. The power is different. So I'm good at I'm very physical. I learned ballet. I was in the People's Liberation Army when I was 14 in Tibet. Everybody, you know. From there, come to here, I was like, wow, it's almost a different kind of life. So I, I move very well. I remember I did a movie, Crank 2, with Jason Stason, right? They had this girl, stunt double. She took her literally two months to lose weight. In the back, she went, it just looked like me. I said, oh my God, dress everything. So finally, when they dropped in the car, the car came in, they lift me up. When the car come, dropped him on there, I said, I'm going to do it. I was crazy. You know these guys put a string around the phone, all of that. The car comes to drop. What about if you drop me a door? I'm gonna hit the ground, right? I was crazy, but I did that. <laughs> even, but I just feel the different energy, and I like to take chances. Like even the pro, your partner asked. Now I'm not gonna do that. At that time, I do not know English, right? The one name in the end of the pro chasing after me, there's a column, like the column. You say, buddy, counting uh, one, two, three, you stick your head. Then counting one, two, three, you back. What about I come there? He come differently. I'm here to shoot me. How dangerous is that? I said, I was so stupid. But nothing happened. I said, I'm not going to do that again. So it's like really, really, I feel, of course, you're going to ask the pro, probably. I feel the only thing I can feel comfort is like, I don't believe in that in real life. I feel that your body worn out, you're old, whatever. But the spirit is timeless, ageless. They're in the space. So therefore, I can accepted that and also every time uh, I, I talk about him I feel his yeah. presence. Yeah. I truly feel because 
I'm just answering a question I'm sure you're gonna ask. Like, we're sitting next to each other doing makeup every day, like two hours, right? After a while, he said, Bai Lin, um, I heard you're Chinese, right? I said, yeah. He said, uh, I'm Chinese. I said, no, no, your hands are white, or you're teasing, right? He said, I'm really Chinese. I said, who's Chinese? He said, my father. I said, really? I said, OK, what do your father do? He said, my father's big movie star. I said, really? I said, what's his name? He's Bruce Lee. I said, I never heard of him. He was like, yeah, like you probably one or two people never heard of my father. I said, I really don't know. But he's going to disappoint me. I feel bad. We're in North Carolina. I finally called my friend in New York. I said, who's Bruce Lee? He told me, why didn't you shall know? Because I did not speak English. I don't know who Bruce Lee is. Who else, right? Next day I said, I know who your father is. He said, no wonder he was so happy. So that's our, actually I'm doing a big documentary next, um, next Thursday, and UK, they're doing a big doc documentary about Brandon Lee's last day. So they want me to be participate because I'm like, also I, he was so caring. I, I feel the energy because maybe I need to remind him of his father's background because I don't understand. I, all I can say is, I come from China, my English school. That's really, I know. He said, like with the big explosion of pro, they have this size. I just said, I don't say this explode because I didn't understand language. And I feel like he's like caring for me, like he feels something. So I feel like when it happened, I just couldn't comprehend. I couldn't, I don't know how to make it real. And when we were in North Carolina, it's like, storm and raining that day it was just really really sad it's like almost like in the movie in the beginning next storm and that place we were shooting was like this, this factory nobody there in an empty building then the water streaking and it just goes almost like ghost town so that's also something after that i i because i don't understand the language you become more sensitive i realized that that's why i love moving no matter what happened no matter what happened to us to the moment the, the moment the capture on the film will be always there, no matter how many years pass. So that's something magic about film. I think that's probably what you love about no matter what, you can watch the same. Well, so you definitely covered some of my questions about I know, the pro, sure. but, um, but kind of expanding on that experience, um, you mentioned that you didn't speak much English at that point. How do you? audition for roles in the United States and, and, and how do you work with everybody without speaking English? Did you have interpreters or did you use No, it was so painful. I cried. Like, I live in New York, right? My agent called to audition. Broadway, there's a Bowery, right? I, I didn't know. I go there. I, I knock the door. The Spanish woman come out with baby cry. I say, I'll, I'll be, get fucked up out of here. I say, so I go home and my, my agent said, why didn't you go? I said, I went there. There's nobody. And also it's funny. I was auditioning for Shakespeare. Can you imagine? I was in the room. The casting director, literally, when I was waiting, he was on the phone. I was crying. How insulting, right? I was like, to be? Or not to be? He was on the phone. He said, what is this? Like a joke. I went through so much, like um, the, the, the pro, right? I auditioned. It's funny. Um, all the girls have rings on their nose. And, black legs, or at that time my hair was this long, I would just dress a t-shirt and jeans. I said, my English pool, I'm from China. I would just say like that. So finally I auditioned because I, I'm a good actress. So I did the scene, so I left. I said, I'll never get this role because I just don't look like that. So at that time in New York, we're moving, we don't have cell phone. It's like popular phone, a house phone. My agent actually find me at my home. He said, you know, said, your phone was disconnected. They're finding me, he said, they want you to call back. So what is call back? I have no clue. He said, could you put some makeup on? Dress, sexy. I don't have. <coughs> I remember I bought a dress, I think it's $80 to me, so expensive. I kept it for many years. So I came in, so I put, put some makeup. And the director said, I love what you did yesterday. I said, really? It was like that. He said, can you be my <coughs> like, oh, Miss too? Like, she has a magic power, okay? Kill people or something. I said, oh, that's me. So I was reading. In the half of it, he said, perfect. Um, but there's one thing, it's a funny thing. The script, take me three months to read it with the dictionary, I still don't understand. Finally, the agent called and said they want to nudity. I said, in the script, there's no nudity. I said, no, 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 no. They want me to frontal and side all of that. I said, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. So finally, the, the director said, Alex Priyas in Australia, he said, you want to talk to me? 
about nudity, right? I prepared a look at Stickner. He called me from Austria. He said, Bonnie, I heard you have a problem about nudity. I work with models. They do a lot of music video. This girl just changing from a little given shit, right? He said, uh, you, you, I said, no, I come from communist country. Communist, so you see. But I learned one word. I said, as long as you cover my nipples. <laughs> it's above here, right? Then it's funny. Finally, my agent called me there. My agent's gay, right? I got there. I said, bye. You want to show your cleavage? I said, what is a cleavage? I don't know, right? He's a gay guy. He's like, a cleavage. I said, what is cleavage? The whole office was laughing, right? I said, you still don't understand. Finally, I said, no, I'm not going to do it. So they're so clever because maybe the director said, oh, it's Asian girl. It's sexy, right? Finally, I had the opening scene was a shower scene. You see, in shower, you have to be nude, right? I said, okay, you can shoot my back. That's what happened. So all the, I'm glad I wasn't like totally new, but it's kind of a sexy way. So when I got uh, more story, Michael Wincock showed up, right? They got it fucking wrong. Just like that. Because I was like, hey, my big school from China. He's like, dismiss me. Finally, gave me makeup, everything. First day, I walk out. I said, hello. Everyone was like shocked. I feel like I'm transformed. It's like a normal, like a Western culture. People some see, discover different side. Like I, I immediately adapt into the spiritual side. Like this beings from nature, I start change. So everybody's like that. So when I was there, I didn't know, this call time. I see my clock, I was so long, plus so nervous. One, one day, just beginning, I got a call. I said, my, my call time, I'm gonna get up. So Michael Wonka said, hey, it's me, it's who says, I'm a top dollar. He said, oh, it's my call time. He said, the fucking time is so boring. He's only one bar. He said, come have a drink with me. He said, no, 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 no. So I learned so many things from uh, dealing with these people. I'm like, from the communist country, dealing with the Hollywood startup. It's almost like an alien. You know, a lot of the jokes, a lot of, I learned so much, I cried so much. So come to today, I feel like uh, the journey is really beautiful. I'm just gonna ask one more question and I'd like to open up to the audience. Um, and this is kind of, I don't know what the, you'll think of this question, but you've acted in China, you've acted in the United States. China's influence in uh, Hollywood is growing considerably by the year. What do, you, do you think this is a, a good thing, a bad thing? I think it's a great thing, like, because I'm inside of me, I don't see me, I see all you. I'm just part of this element of creature. You know, I think it's all good. Whatever evolves. So when I come here, it's very different. I'm making a movie in China than here. In China, I'm like a big star, right? When you, the bigger you are, and the things you do more. When we rap, you move the microphone, you move the lights, you help everybody. You just have in the chair and all of that. We have to help each other. So when I was doing the pro, right after the rap, I was moving the light. Said, what the hell are you doing, buddy? I said, I'm helping. I said, oh, mind your business. I said. Then I start moving chair, moving. I said, what is this girl doing? But in my mind, it's like that. It's even funny thing, because the wardrobe, right? They give to me everything, you have to leave it there. You, you literally make it change until you go home. So then after I'm leaving, he said, bye, where's the underwear? <laughs> I said, that, 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 I, I'm worried. I'm going to watch it. No, 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 you leave here. I said, oh, no, no, it's embarrassing watch my underwear. This is in China, I never heard of it. But in here, no, 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 it's our job. Just leave it here. So I'm learning all of this stuff, you know. So finally, like I was, I actually worked with the Olive Stone, the Nixon. I played an interpreter of Nixon and Chairman Mao. But well, I played an interpreter, but I myself did not speak English. It's a joke, right? He just like he said, I couldn't pronounce millions, millions of people. He said, that means millions. It's crazy. He said, if you don't pronounce right, I'm gonna doubt you. I said, no, 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 no. Every day, like, millions, millions, millions. So I feel like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm. Meeting all these people, I learned so much, including George Lucas, Hugh Hoffner, all this culture I come from. Wow, so lucky. It's journey is like really, really different from China. I feel like now it's more open to Asian. Like I'm auditioning yesterday, I auditioned. They put us open to Spanish, Black, Asian, whatever. Every role is like that. I said well, we're just part of that. You know, it's kind of a it's open. I think it's good, and I think as long as you stay positive. Like a lot of the roles I play, it's not for Asian, like a crank too. This is like a white girl, uh, because my audition I got. So I feel like uh, I, I'm not limited by the whatever how I look. I just say uh, the, the 
I bring a lot of stereotypes. They cast me as the talent that I have. Like I yeah. tell you a little, little story. About this this film actually, the name is not very good. La Branch, right? The first grotto, the story about first grotto in Atlanta was the Helen Mary. His husband, uh, Taylor Hepford, was directing, right? So Jim Patch was in it. But in the end, they cut all of us, just, just Helen Mary because he's his wife. So I got audition, he requested me, right? I said, well, I said, Taylor, if you want me, give me some substantial, not just some little you know, Asian role. I'm basically turned down my job. He said, well, uh, okay, what do you want? I said, important prostitute here, you know, give me a substantial role. He said, oh yeah, there's a one role. She's a top earner prostitute. Her name is Samantha, though. She's 20 years old. It's kind of around the big boobs. So I said, I want that. He said, okay, you go prepare. I have so many people. You go prepare and come out to improvisation. I said, no, do it now. He was like, you're crazy. He said, in that case, I'm going to audition with you. Normally, director watching, he's going to do it. The theme is, I'm the top prostitute. I don't want to do anything. I just want money. He doesn't want to pay. He just want to have fun, right? I said, stop. I was just standing there. And they cast me. They said, all oh, our girls, which one is it her? And he's I said, no touching. I said, today, I'm not in a good mood. He was like, right? If you're top, like, I'm not in a good kiss you all of that. Finally, I said, wow, you have beautiful blue eyes. I just went, went for that. I said, you know what? I don't know anything about you, but I know one thing about you for sure. He said, what is that? I said, from today on, you're going to come back just for me. He was like, it's just purely improvisation, right? After that, he said, let's talk about price. I hold his uh, watch, I said, how much is the watch cost? He has no clue what I was saying. So finally, I just said, you can change people's mind. So after that, so I leave, I was dressing basically a t-shirt, see through it into a short mini skirt. He said, Marty, you go out, you're gonna stop traffic, right? <laughs> so finally, I left. Three days later, he called me. He said, Taylor, I said, no, that's not you. Finally, he said, is it really you? He said, when you walked in, I know I'm going to cast you. When you left, you got the job. He said, that's a job purely has nothing to do with me. And he told me, he said, how do you get the people's attention? I said, by not trying to get the attention. So basically, this you, like this girl here, wherever you get a job, you just have to, because the audition, any interview, the, you're the boss, right? The boss is neutral. You're the driver. You can go forward and go back. They want you to win. So for me, I just decided to go for it. So a lot of the actors that you meet, they go there, you're trying to figure out what the director wants, what the boss wants. You're trying to please them. Then the, the boss says, you're with, you're out. But if you're challenging, I'm your partner. I can bring this. You always win. That's always I go and you have gods. I just, even like George Lucas, right? Oh my God, I have so many stories. I just see, after we were shooting in Sydney, I said, George, what do you want me to do? He said, do whatever the hell you want. I said, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Maybe I'll share this, because I always want to share with people something uh, important, insightful for your own journey. You have to trust your journey, like I, how I got Star Wars. I was in the MTV musical world. Everybody sitting there, you know, in commercial, you just wait. I left to the green room to get food. I was standing waiting, waiting the buffet, right? I was waiting. Suddenly, I heard George Lucas in front of me. I said, oh my god, my age, no agent can get a meeting with him. He's in front of me. I said, oh my god, what am I going to ask a job? I was debating my I was so excited. And then I thought, no. Every actor asks for a job. He will never remember me. So one of the actors asked for a job. Right? I said, I'm not going to ask a job. I'm not going to say hello. It's a stupid. You don't say hello. Anybody, at least you say hello. I didn't. I said, no, I left. How stupid is that? I don't know what's wrong with my mind. So I get to sit in the sofa, taking a high heel shot of the eating. And there's a lady come. He said, buddy, can I, I love you in the angel, the TV show angel. He said, oh, my big fan. I love you, angel. Can I take a selfie or selfie, all of that? I said, sure. He said, can I sit here? You know, my, my, my feet hurt. He said, sure. We're eating. He's talking, all of that. She's talking. Finally, George Lucas, in front of the director, walking towards us. I said, what is this happening? He just walked in front, standing in front of me. This lady get up. He said, buddy, let me introduce you to someone. It's my dad. 
Oh. 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 This is a KD Lucas daughter. How I avoid it, right? Come to I start answering, oh my god, I see you, I hear you, I didn't say, I said, if I'm in your movie, well, I start talking about, I said, choreography, I'll be in a Star Wars dream country. I was so nervous. I said, he said, you're a great actress, you know me? He said, yeah, Red Corner, like the star was a rich here. I play lawyer puppet. He said, yeah. I said, oh my god, I'm so I was so nervous, I left. Again, I could sit there, right? I was, just don't know why I was so nervous. But then I learned, uh, three, two weeks later, I was in Hawaii Film Festival. You know, when you got a job, your agent, your manager, or colleagues, I said, what's up? They buy me. How the hell you got Star Wars? The agent had no clue. I said, I know what's going on. I said, really? I offer. What role? He said, the script. Director sent me your home. We don't get to know. Tomorrow you go to Warner Brothers to buy a wardrobe. And then, like three or four days later, they, they flew me to Australia. That's what happened. I think he liked me that time. He's like, here's where you take me to lunch, dinner, all of that. So. What I want to see is see if that moment I didn't listen to my instinct, the nature, I, I'll be smart or my, I'm gonna talk to him. Then I will mess up the moment. KD Lucas passed by. I've never seen, I never meet George Lucas in this world. But I follow my instinct. I gave up that. So I left. So I turned, George, the KD Lucas just see me. All of this, the universe is so much bigger, arranged for us. We don't see it. You might think I'm stupid, I lose the opportunity, but it's yours, never will be lost. So I, I have a guts, so I did not say hi. I sit there, I bring him come to me. That, that just, I want to share the story. A lot of things, we have to be confident, or sure about ourselves. We, we, we will get it. Like this is exactly, including Hugh Hoffner, all of that, they come to me, I never ask for them. But I, I go having fun, I give joy, like Hugh Hoffner, See my in, my red cover, you know, my Nicole Shana, because every dress is so big. I didn't know. Paparazzi is so mean. So why didn't bend down? I didn't know them, you know? And they take a shot, mix it all over. I dress the elegant, I don't see the picture. Every time it's something, you know, it's like I see all those fucking people. But because of that, you have to get them. You don't know all these things you, you just have to be you. You know, and, and life will arrange it. Sometimes we're so smart, we're trying to manipulate, we do this, do it. If I was smart trying to get a George Lewis to cast me, I'd, I'd never be working with him. Right? I left. I don't know. My mind first, and I just go, the, the universe, we don't say, go there, go there, sit there, don't say how to go. So I followed. But you never know. They, they have plan for you. I trust that. I just go, go, go. So, like, I came here, I do not speak English, I don't know anybody. First time I was in a red carpet after a red corner, right? I was in the carpet. Then they took a quarter ticket. Why, what are you wearing? I said, I'm wearing a jacket. Whose jacket? I said, my jacket. <laughs> I was so offended. I said, what are you talking about? It's my, what do you, how do you imagine it's not my jacket? I'm wearing. But I did not know what they were asking. The designer. Taking me forever to remember the oh, all that stuff. So this culture I'm learning, of course, a lot of tears, laughter, because they think, they think I'm stupid, but it's kind of funny, it's cute, because I don't understand. What is celebrity? I have no clue. So like my journey is really kind of like, everywhere, every time I go, I'm gonna share some of those deep fate or destiny and wisdom. You have to be comfortable, trust yourself. That's what I do. Everywhere, I appreciate you inviting me here. You know, this moment is ours. And I get to see Andy Warhol's museum, and I booked, I'm gonna see the Hamlet wow. show. So like this time, you know, being, he took me yesterday to the view. I said, wow, so beautiful. So this is appreciation, like, I, I come here and meet all of you, and also enjoy exciting. If people come see me and make money, great, if I don't, I'm still having fun. So that's life, if you have to keep joy. So I want to share something that's meaningful for you guys, you know, like my experience. Um, we have time for at least one question. Does anybody have anything on their mind? Ask me one of the questions. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, I really enjoyed your work in My Baby's Daddy. Oh. What are you going to talk about? Some funny stories from the podcast. Yeah, with uh, Anthony Anderson, right? I like him when he's choppy. You know, we have a son, Bruce Lee Roy. You know, it's so crazy, that one. That, that one is kind of a tough shooting where in Toronto is cold, was Harvey Weinstein was the producer with Neon Max, 
any grief in it. I don't want to see it. It's kind of difficult. The joke around teases me. I don't understand, but I feel it's something not good because I don't understand. People tease me sometimes. I just feel like don't do this because I don't understand. But I like the role, you know, with my family. The shit is. I don't know what is it. The shit is good. The shit is. The shit is not good. The shit is good. The shit is not good. It's not good. The shit why is it? No, the shit is good. The shit. I was like confused. So funny, but I learned a lot of those、uh, slangs. You know, I had a great experience. You know, I had this baby. I, first time I, I never have children giving birth. I was, I was really feel like、oh, I'm going crazy. It was so much fun. That I love, like love comedy. I'm like, oh, one thing I want to share.、Um, Jordan is comedic. I did my own movie. I made my, my self first time、uh, director debut film. I write. I direct. I star. I produce. I don't have money. I don't know nothing. But I say you live once. You have to do things you love. So my fan says, "But if you don't have money, you don't have script. How the hell you make movie? Even Steven Spielberg wouldn't do it."、And、my answer was, "Because I'm Biden. Because I have universe behind.、Me. See, you don't have to know everything. You know distribution. I don't ask me. You take one step. You open this door. The next door will open. You just have to go. Trust your instinct." Now should I? I just finish my rough cutting and cement it to big festival. So、uh, I give myself the opportunity. You have to do something you love. I have investor coming in, right? But they want to change things. I said I don't want your money. I want to do what I want. So I get up four thirty, get Starbucks, whatever. But I never done that. But I don't know what that passion from. If you ask me to do today, there's no way. So much work. I did it. It's called my quarantine romance with toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Because I didn't have toilet paper. It's a comedy, but it's it's a love story. But it's during the COVID. It's because I don't have toilet paper. I have money, no toilet paper in history. Never was anybody worried about toilet paper. It's only now for COVID. I think that's something very. It's funny, also so stupid, but it's silly, but it's true. It's profound. I write a song too. I don't want to sing it. It's a toilet paper song. It's funny. <laughs> so that movie, I'm very excited to. I think it's gonna go viral. It's so silly, but so fun. It's like my post graduate story. The roller coaster, fast, fast, fast. So that's something I'm very excited. It's like I'm making my own journey. I'm making myself a director. Nobody will. You wait for other people. Do it yourself. Have the guts. So what? You fail. So what? You had fun. It's the process. I had fun. Who cares, right? But you gotta go. You never know which magic will take you. One wisdom I want to share with you. That's me. Like everybody has a fear. Me too. But the only difference is when you have fear, you're gonna take another road. Take ten years to cross that road. But I will jump. That could, I might die. But I, I'm curious. I said, what's what's the fear? Why am I free? But only when you have the guts to jump. You discover, I discover, I have this magical meaning. That's why I never die. So if you don't go that far, you never know your potential. My difference is I come from a communist country. Now. I jump, I do things. But what did I get? This job? Do you know that Tom and Jill? How many of those people come to my life? It's because I'm God. We see something. You know, you just be you. People will see the brilliance of you. Just show your brilliance. Show your purity. Magic. Well, I guess unfortunately we have to、thank、wrap、God. it up. But thank you.、Uh, of course, Bio will be at our table all weekend, so we'll get some <laughs> questions. And I will stop by to let you know how Pittsburghers are usually overly prepared in a toilet paper situation. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't have little bit. First time I I don't have toilet paper. Finally, I have to. I don't talk to my fan. I guess he said, "I want to see." I said, "Sure." Do you have toilet paper? Do you have toilet paper? The first time I meet him, he's six feet apart. Give me toilet paper. He's buying. I've never imagined. So follow me, and I am buying Instagram or official buying Facebook, Twitter, real buying. So you see all this、uh, toilet paper stories. I also have two films locked down, and Jack Bean Nimble coming out. There's two films coming out later right now. So it's all different. Thank you.